George was excited. He was about to have a very special overnight guest. George, they're here. <laughs> okay, I I'm, I'm glad you're excited. Look, Hundley, it's your buddy George. <laughs> Come on in, guys. Thanks for letting Hundley spend the night while I'm gone. I brought all of his chew toys and snacks and grooming supplies. Thank you, Hunley. And this is a list of everything Hunley needs and when he needs it. Oh, that's quite a list. He's used to doing things in a certain way. Uh, uh. This is the first time we've been apart in three years, seven months, and 15 days. <laughs> I'll pick you up in the morning, just like we talked about. Bye-bye. Bye. We'll make sure he has a good time. <laughs> it's bedtime for monkeys. Oh, dachshunds, too. <laughs> Hundley was confused. How did his squeaky mouse get out there? George couldn't believe that Hundley wanted to play with a squeaky toy now. But it was too late. <laughs> Just to make sure Hundley wasn't trying to tell him something important, George checked the list. Hundley didn't want to play. He always slept with Squeaky Mouse. Squeaky Mouse helped Hundley sleep and kept nightmares away. Hundley was very happy to have a friend like George who would get out of bed to kick Squeaky Mouse off the balcony? Hundley knew George was having a bad dream, and he didn't have his own squeaky mouse. Whoa. Hello, Hundley. How you doing, boy? Was he any trouble? Not at all. Right, George? <laughs> Hundley says thank you. Dogs and monkeys don't always understand each other. But sometimes, a squeaky mouse can tell you who your real friends are. George had a lot of friends to say howdy to. The pigs. Ah, ah, ah. 
Mrs. Rankins. No. Ah! Whoa there, George. Huh. You gave me a turn. And of course, the chickens. Ooh. <laughs> huh? Did George just see a girl in there? Huh? Hi there. <laughs> <laughs> sitting there for one whole hour, and guess what? You want to guess? You want to guess? You'll never guess! <laughs> I am really glad that I'm not a chicken. So, if you're thinking, I wonder what it's like to be a chicken, I can tell you, it's not very interesting! George had seen a lot of strange things in his day, but this was strange. Well, I see you two have met. George, this is my granddaughter, Allie. Oh, are you a monkey? I like monkeys. Do you want to play tomorrow? <laughs> Allie's a spark plug, but if there's anyone who can keep up with her, it's you, George. Bye-bye. Oops, um, don't forget about tomorrow. <laughs> Does he live in that tree? Uh-huh. Hey, let's go see. Race ya. Oops. Except, how do I get down? Hmm. Ah! <laughs> Ta-da! Yeah, only I can't really do that, because I'm not an actual monkey. So, how would a non-actual monkey get down from a tree? You want me to hold on while I'm climbing down. Okay. Whoops, I ran out of rope, George. Hey! Look what you did, George! <laughs> Do it again. Huh? Hey, it's Mr. Yellow Pants! Did you get me the flying trapeze? Sorry, the store doesn't carry circus equipment for some reason, but I found these. Oh, walkie talkies! Oh, I have to show my grandmother. Bye bye! I'll call you later. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! <laughs> You're welcome. So, George, did you have a nice time with Allie? <laughs> that night, George couldn't wait for lights out. And so the little mouse roared, and the house fell down. Oh. <laughs> Good night, George. Happy dreams. This was the start of a beautiful and curious friendship. And we go hot. And when the squirrel comes in to get the nuts, we jump out and we say, Hi, ya squirrel! You think that'll work? If you like juicy, there's nothing juicier than actual juice. Try the most delicious drink you'll ever drink, courtesy of me, Juicy J. It's got five fruits and vegetables. Oh. Uh, plus a special secret ingredient. Mm. That was the best drink George ever drank. Ah. <laughs> Here you go. George, wait till you see all the stuff I bought. <laughs> well, okay, but just one sip. I I'm not very thirsty. Hmm. 
<sighs> Whew. Can I have <laughs> two more? You sure can. Some juicer you've got there. Second best invention in the world. The first is my tasty health drink. <laughs> Where'd everybody go? Everybody packed up and left already. Huh? But don't worry, they'll be back next week. Oh? A whole week without juice? What was George going to do? You know, George, if we had our own juicer, we could make the drink ourselves. <gasps> <laughs> Maybe George needed more of these things. Close, but George thought more apples might help. George's juice was perfect. Well, almost. It still needed a special secret ingredient. Huh. Where could he find one of those? Ah! Hello, dear, dear. See, can I interest you in today's special? Special? That's exactly what he was looking for. It's eggplant piccata. With extra amounts of piccata. Mm, well, huh. Oh, those are radishes. Try one, try one. <laughs> oh, oh, but careful. Radishes are a little eh, speziato. That means spicy. Radishes were spicy. But spicy might be good in a drink. <laughs> I know. Help yourself, Georgie. <laughs> Just the radishes? Bye-bye. <laughs> George hoped that one radish would do the trick. <laughs> George had done it. His juice was just as good as Juicy J's. Better even. George! Oh, no. <laughs> oh, have you been making juice? <laughs> mm. Oh, oh my goodness, this juice is amazing! <laughs> 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 yeah! George thought his juice was so delicious, he decided to give it away at the next farmer's market. Get your George juice. It's made with apples for strong bones, cabbage for vitamin C, and a bunch of other healthy stuff. Oh, thanks. Oh, this is fantastic. Can I get the recipe? Sure. George started with your juice, but added a few new ingredients. <laughs> a radish? Oh, that is brilliant! A revolution in juice making! To George and his delicious George juice! Fever, stuffy nose, clammy paws. You're definitely fighting a germ, George. A germ is... Uh, hold on. I think there's a picture in this book. Here you go. See that blob? That's a germ. Some germs are good for you, but bad germs can make you sick. Well, that's your body. Your nose. Mouth, stomach, <laughs> those are your lungs. Uh. When you sneeze yes. or cough, <laughs> that's your lungs squeezing together and trying to force out the bad germs. <laughs> Enough biology. Time for you to rest. George didn't want to rest. 
he wanted to get rid of his bad germ. If only he knew how. George saw a face. A face he had seen before. In the mirror. It was him. George's mouth was amazing. It was like a giant cave. A cave with an echo. A squishy floor, which was actually his tongue. And best of all, a spaceship. George could find that bad germ and get rid of it. just as soon as he figured out how to work that spaceship. So where should we go next? Uh, the throat? Hey, maybe the ears. Hey, hey, what are you doing? George couldn't believe how hard it was to get rid of one measly germ. Hmm. <laughs> hey, 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 what are you doing? Let me go! George didn't have a feather, but he did have 20 fingers. No! <laughs> George and Yoki had done it. Toots was gone. You're awake. How do you feel? George felt great. He could even smell again. Well, you seem much better. <coughs> I wish I could say the same. Oh, thank you, George. That song was very familiar. Where was it coming from? Unbelievable, and I don't think you'll even believe it. So, are you ready? <laughs> okay, I am going to kindergarten. Yeah! Huh? Kindergarten is where you go when you're big and you need to learn stuff like how to write your name in eight plus two. I want you to come with me to get all my school tools. So can you come? Can you come? <laughs> it was a good thing George went shopping with Allie because she needed a monkey's eye. Okay, which backpack? The lion, the witch, or the warthog? Hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's the one I wanted too because it holds the most stuff. See, in kindergarten, you need exactly three rulers and a cowboy belt and binoculars and pipe cleaners. Wow, kindergarten sure sounded like fun. Where else would you need three rulers and a cowboy belt? Guess what? These are two for one. Ooh. Would you like a backpack, George? <laughs> 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 The 
next day, George wondered how Allie was doing in kindergarten. weren't allowed in kindergarten. Maybe he should ask. The bookshelves, the water, not a problem. But sand in a carpet, that's a problem. Uh, Mrs. Gold, George wants to know if he can build a castle instead of draw one. Uh, uh, sh sure, sure. I I'll be right there. Let me tell you about carpets. First, you got your shags. Then yours your okay, area George. Of family, uh, which is divided into the short pile and the deep pile. It's not easy building a castle. But George found a way. <laughs> With bookshelves and blocks for walls. And a curtain for the roof. And every castle needed a window. George's school tool made a great construction level. At last, the castle was ready. All it needed was a tree. Yes, well, thank you. That was most informative. I'm sure it will look... <gasps> oh, my! It was George's idea, but we helped. When you said a castle, you meant a, a castle. Oh, this is wonderful! It's amazing what you can do when you use your imagination and work together and have a monkey to help you. Oh, <laughs> Yay for George! Yay for George! It was good being a guest monkey. But it was also good being a plain old regular monkey on his way home. George thought the best way to spend a relaxing afternoon was a visit with Professor Wiseman. <laughs> Gravitational pool. You're welcome. Oh, oh, hi, guys. Hi. Just a minute. I have to respond to this urgent message from Dr. Hasline. Uh, should we come back another time? You seem busy. Oh, no. I am dizzier. I mean, busier than usual, but it's administrative duties. Huh? Huh. Office work. Answering questions, filing, copying. <laughs> Apatosaurus, herbivorous. Oh. Boy, I'm overseeing five exhibits, two opening here and two more opening in Cleveland. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean four exhibits. Two plus two still equals four, even when you're distracted. Oh. I think all of this work is getting to you. <laughs> George is right. Y you need to relax. We'll help. We're very relaxing guys. How about Saturday? <laughs> George is right. Oh, where is the schedule? I had a pen. Oh, there it is. Thank you. 
<laughs> Saturday, relax. <laughs> George, careful! <laughs> uh... No problem, we're still feeding them, right? It's fun, huh? Right? Ducks! But your hat is waddling away. <laughs> oh! My hat! We can solve this problem. You shouldn't. I, I should. Okay, how? <gasps> Aha! We can use the kite string to fish the hat out of the water. I just need a hook. <laughs> Perfect choice. Okay, want to toss it, George? More weight. Huh. Okay, try again. See that branch? Uh huh. We can use it to lift the hat. We can? Hmm. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Oh. This wasn't what I planned. All you did was solve problems for us. Please accept my apology. Apology for what? I had a very relaxing day. Huh? Relaxing? Exactly. Hands-on problem solving. Not like work where I just answer questions and shuffle paper. Ah, well then, you're welcome. Well, see ya. <laughs> oh, okay. Wow, who knew relaxing could be so exhausting? Uh, sure. <laughs> Come on, George. I think it's time for a nap. George and Steve were having one of those carefree days when there was nothing to do. Ah, it's great being out on the street and not chasing after Charky for once. Oh, <laughs> Tell you, Nettie, we are going to break the record. Break the record? What record? Let's see what's going on. <laughs> Jeffy, how long is it now? 25, 26. Oh, oh hello, Giorgio. Hello, Stevie. Oh, we are making the longest strand of cooked spaghetti in the world! Oh! <laughs> Ooh! Huh. Oh, this? Well, it's a tape measure I'm using to measure our spaghetti. Ooh! Uh. I can use this to see that you are... Ba -ba -ba, two feet tall! <gasps> oh! <laughs> Oh, I know, that is pretty tall, but this magnificent strand of spaghetti measures tw this, uh, 28, 29, 30 feet! Wow! <laughs> wow, Chef Paschetti, with a spaghetti strand that long, you're sure to get in Ginny's world record book! That's our goal! We'll know this afternoon when Ginny herself comes to see it. Ginny, the, the official world record book lady, is coming here? Yes, and we need to go to town hall now to get back before Ginny comes. <gasps> Say, 
Hey, aren't you Ginny the world record book lady? You are correct. Oh, I've been a fan of yours for years. Well, thank you. I'm here looking for... I know what you're looking for. Chef Biscatti's is this way. There's Biscatti's restaurant. And here's Chef Biscatti's strand of spaghetti. <laughs> I have got to get a picture of this. George could see that the spaghetti wasn't touching the ground. Which meant it was a little bit shorter than the building. How could he measure the difference? When George held the strand at the top of his head, it reached the ground. That meant the building was exactly one spaghetti strand and one George tall. Oh, yes. Oh, this is going to be spectacular. <laughs> Love this. Stevie, why you don't come back in a minute? <gasps> You're Ginny, the world record book lady. And you must be Chef Piscari. <laughs> yes, yes. And up there on the roof, is that your monkey friend? Uh, yes, a uh, monkey. Uh, <gasps> Giorgio? Displaying your super long spaghetti strand. Here's the photograph I just took of it. Wow. Does that set a world record, Jenny? Oh, I'm afraid not. Here's the picture I took of Alfonso Dimitri displaying his strand of cooked spaghetti from the Leaning Tower of Pisa. No, oh, no. Now I'm never gonna get in the world record book. You most certainly will. You have the second longest strand of cooked spaghetti. Three stories tall. Son of the wow, God! Three stories oh, tall! stories tall! Way to go! <laughs> Three stories. I gotta call Nettie and tell her the building next door is three stories tall. <laughs> so Gnocchi finally got to play with the spaghetti. And Chef Piscetti broke a second record. World's longest cat toy. George always liked to visit the man with the yellow hat's old neighborhood. And that used to be the bookstore. And look, that's where I saw my very first movie. <laughs> oh, this used to be a great old theater. Maybe someday someone will fix it up. What's going on? Progress, that's what. Wait till you see the unique self-cleaning parking structure I've planned for this site. But this old theater is full of memories. You can't tear it down. Tear down this theater? You're not serious. Look at the beautiful lobby. This bijou's what inspired me to become a doorman in the first place. But it's tired and run down. It's a hopeless, broken old theater. George didn't think it looked hopeless. He'd seen the man with the yellow hat fix things up before. Why couldn't he fix up an old movie theater, too? <laughs> Repair the theater? Us? Right, George. If we don't do it, who will? How about it, Mr. Glass? Let us put on a special screening. We'll show you that this theater is worth preserving. I don't want to go out to a movie. With one of these, why bother? <laughs> but a movie is always more fun on the big screen. It can be a truly unique event. Unique? Hmm. Hi, you're a monkey, aren't you? Uh-huh. Okay, it's a deal. Uh -huh. Great. 
If you clean up this place and put on a unique, one-of-a-kind show, I'll save the theater. Mr. Glass, I, I promise we'll knock your socks off. Oh, boy. Ah, here it is. Hundy was afraid the popcorn would never stop. It was time to get help stopping this mess. Hundley wasn't going to let a bag of popcorn and a monkey stop him. Uh, Mr. Glass, I'll, I'll, I'll be in the lobby if you'd like to talk. Oh. <laughs> well, what did he think? Now that was unique. I've never sat through anything like it. You folks truly knocked my socks off. <laughs> yes, you've convinced me that this old bijou has got to stay. Fantastic. Uh, just one thing. Next time, when the volcano erupts, mm. how about a little less salt on the popcorn? <laughs> On their way home from the circus, the monkey with the yellow balloon and the man with the yellow hat noticed that Professor Wiseman's light was still on. Don't tell me you're still working, Professor. Of course, it's only nine o'clock. What's this? A foot race? Mm-hmm. We're trying to raise money for an expedition to the lost city of Omam. Great cause. I'll sign up for that. Hey, you want to help me train, George? <laughs> Great. What about you, Professor? Are you going to run? Me? Oh, I can't run. I've got way too much work. <laughs> oh. Ah. <sighs> oh, boy. What? He sprained his ankle? How can I train for the race without him? <laughs> you want to be my personal trainer? <laughs> okay. Well, let's get running. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait for me! <laughs> George thought that to be a trainer, all he had to do was run, and Professor Wiseman would follow. Simple. <laughs> the day the professor outran him, George knew she was ready for the race. Oh, I never knew running would make me feel this good. I have so much energy now. Thank you, George. For the Ferris wheel, for the balloons, for teaching me that running is fun. <laughs> Good evening, Professor. Oh, hi, everyone. I'm running in that race tomorrow. Will you be there? <laughs> we wouldn't miss it for the world. <laughs> race day, George couldn't believe how many people showed up. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, I forgot my water. <laughs> oh, thanks. So, you really think I can do this? <laughs> Go, Professor Wiseman! Go, Professor Wiseman! Sis boom ba! Sis boom ba! Runners, take your marks! The race was on. The professor seemed to be doing everything right. She ran at a steady pace. And there she was drinking water. So far, so good. George wanted to see the professor cross the finish line, so he made sure to get a good spot. Do you see her? I don't see her. She looks tired. <laughs> oh no, something's wrong. Maybe she got a Charlie horse. Huh? That's a cramp in your leg, George, and they can be very painful. Ooh. Ooh. Hi there. Ah! I thought it'd be fun if my personal trainer finished the race with me. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I did it! I actually ran a race! I got a medal for finishing, and the race was a huge success. We raised enough money for our trip to Omom. Oh, that's terrific! And I found out who those anonymous donors were. Apparently, they thought I needed to work a little less and have fun a little more. That's right, because all work and no play is a crummy way to spend your day. <laughs> <laughs> to thank you for helping me learn that lesson, I want you to have my medal. Oh! <laughs> Gnocchi approves all my recipes. But for the past few days, she likes nothing. I cannot serve unapproved food to my customers. Gnocchi lives on Italian food? Of course not. She merely gives approval. One lick, good. Two licks, excellent. Three licks, magnifico. <laughs> Oh, the three leek recipes always prove to be the customer's favorites. Oh. Ah. <sighs> I have lost the ability to cook. My cooking is worse than cat food. <laughs> well, it sure doesn't smell worse. Yuck. Huh. Mmm. Mmm. And it certainly doesn't taste worse. Not that I've ever tasted cat food. You're just being nice. If Gnocchi won't eat my food, there's no point in serving today. Oh. Flower delivery. Oh, it's a nice selection today. Uh, just to put him down, Hector. Thank you. Okie dokie. Yeah. No, no, no. No chewing under the flowers today. We just started using a florist. Gnocchi thinks the flowers are snacks for her. You might as well let her eat flowers. She won't eat my food. Oh. She must be doing something different. George would watch her and see what she was up to. May 
as well not let them go to waste. If Gnocchi's eating cat food, she's not sick. What could it be? Uh, ah. <sighs> what will we do without ravioli? <clears throat> <clears throat> Uh-oh. I think I'm allergic to something in here. Oh, huh. Yeah, I, I have an allergy. It's when your body overreacts to something like food or a, a, a plant or flowers. Some types of flowers can make some people sneeze and cough. <laughs> well, not you. Some people don't have any allergies and some have a lot. Huh? I have to move these away from me or I won't be able to breathe at all. <laughs> well, that didn't work. George, what are you doing in here? What are you... <laughs> George, I think he's allergic. You shouldn't... <laughs> <gasps> this will be our special tonight. It's Gnocchi approved. <laughs> if not for George, we would never have known that Gnocchi was allergic to those flowers. Giorgio, you have saved the restaurant and my reputation. I'll give you a free pizza. Ah!